this Sony is a bit old. Like me. This Sony is a bit fat. Like me. But this Sony is a beautiful little thing. And that's where the comparisons end. I'll show you the model number in a second. It's the 40 inch LCD, uh, which means it's the um, cold cathode fluorescent tube backlight jobby. Uh, I haven't got a remote, con I haven't got a Sony remote control in this little workshop, but we're going to turn it on and hopefully when I turned it on, which I just did, nothing happened. Oh, I've got a funny, f oh, there we go, it's gone green. So there we go, green light. And we should get something, I would have thought. Within a couple of seconds. Yes, I don't know if you can see that on, I've got four cameras pointing at this, and not one is picking up the fact that that has um, come up with AV5. But that's what it says there. Trust me, I'm a doctor. So on first inspection, everything is looking rather good. Green light is still on. I'm just going to play around with the controls on the top because I don't have a remote. So it's changed to AV6, OK. Can I adjust the volume OK? Don't know. Now it's just clicked and done something. But we still have the green light. but I'm getting absolutely nothing on screen. Oh, I've just pressed a button. Let's see what happens this time. Well, we're back onto AV6. <clears throat> so if I put a feed into AV6, we should get a picture. AVC represents, AV6, sorry, represents something like HDMI 2 on these older Sonys. These do start to look a little bit on the old side now, obviously. Oh, we've had a click. We've lost a picture. But the green light is still on. So it thinks the TV is on. So I'm just going to move things around a little bit. Let's come back on. Obviously, I'm not touching anything at the moment. Let me see if I can find... Right. Um... I'm going to go through all the AV channels. It's clicked itself off. Okay. Don't think I'm going to get very far with this, as you've probably noticed. That switched it off, that switched it back on. Mm. 
again, no backlights. What have we got this time? AV2. I'll keep pressing until I find this HDMI channel, AV3. And that's not it, maybe this one. Yes, okay. So we now have picture and sound. Now when this came into the workshop um, a couple of weeks ago, we're a bit behind on this one just quite simply because of the Christmas time and the coronavirus because we had to close down. I powered it up for the first couple of minutes exactly as I'm doing now and it came on. I, did, I thought well there's nothing wrong with this. I, mean, I have to admit even though this TV is a few years old and is not as slim as some of the more modern ones. Now, I've still got sound, but I've got no picture. Picture gonna come back on? Yes. So let's just run it for a couple of minutes and see what it does. Obviously I can't show you the film on YouTube but I'm going to skip forward and wait for it to do anything else. I've got a funny feeling it'll it'll click off and lose its picture again in a second. Here we go. It's gone click. What I'm expecting it to do eventually, and it may do it, it may not, is to switch off completely and go into its error code. And its error code is nine blinks, but at the moment it's not doing it, so I'm going to have to wait and see for this exciting instalment. And there we have it, you can possibly see on the right hand side, it didn't take long, another couple of minutes, and it went into its, um, I think it's nine blinks, let's just see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It is. So we have a sign, a signy, a signy going into its nine blink code after about five or ten minutes of operation. And I think I know what the problem is because I think we've dealt with this before. Yeah, and you know I'm not one of these engineers that's now going to pretend and go around all the boards um, with a with a multimeter and start testing voltages just to pad out the video and make it look like I'm doing more important things. Um, but it's, it's, it's if you want to have a guess, have a guess. But it's it may surprise you what it is. It may surprise me. Because I may be wrong. But I'm going to guess that it's nothing to do with the power board. It's nothing to do with the main board. It's nothing to do with the T-Con. It's not a screen fault. And it's not the backlights. Well, that <laughs> spout narrows it down. It's not even the IR sensor. We've done a couple of vid Sony videos where the IR sensor fails. 
and it goes into a shutdown, but I, I thought that was a seven blink code. Um, I can't remember. This is a nine blink code, and this is a strange one. Now, with it being Sony, it's a pain in the backside. Yes, she's still here. Um, it's a pain in the backside to take it to bits, because this, this one being of an age now, I think this would have been built in 2010, 2011, around there. So it's going to be 10 years old, and it's going to have a fair few screws in the back. So it's probably going to take half a day to get the screws out, but take the screws out we will. As always, we shall have a look at the model number of this TV. You can see it's a KDL 40W, 40 meaning that it's a 40-inch uh, 2000. And one thing that surprised me, I thought this was a 2010-2011 model. If we have a look at the date there, it says date of manufacture, and it was January 2007. This TV is exactly 14 years old. Wow! That is quite surprising. Um, sorry about me wobbling the camera all over the place. Yeah, that is amazing. Um, I mean, these TVs are still really good. They've got a nice sound quality to them. You don't really need a sound bar unless you're that much of a hi-fi enthusiast with these TVs. And the HD picture quality is, is rather impressive when the TV works. Um, oh, sleeping cat. And at the moment, the TV isn't working, but hopefully we're going to sort that in a moment. And for those that are wondering, yes, she's still with me. She's there. Past the seems to have and here for the winter and then in the springtime so in a few weeks time she'll disappear and start playing with everybody in the fields outside anyway that's enough of misty not that many screws on this i'm pleased to say um to say it's from that era i mean you get a 2007 panasonic boy do they know how to put the screws in and this is a plastic back whereas the um 2007 Panasonics uh, had got metal backs and they were quite sharp too, really sharp. So this is what we're looking at. Look at the size of that power board. My goodness, that could power the space shuttle, couldn't it? Compared to the size of the power boards we're dealing with in 2021, in 2007, that is a proper power board. Of course, you can always check the caps, but you'll very rarely, really find a bad cap on a Sony, no matter how many years it's been in. Samsung, yes. Sony's and Panasonic, never. Not, not, not of this age. Got the main board here. Obviously, the T-Con is up there. It's from that age when they shielded stuff. What did they shield these days? Very little. We have a tuner board here. That's for the Freeview tuner. And above that, there's a board for um, just separate inputs. I think there's a, a jack input. And our problem is going to be right here. Because if you remember, when I was skipping through the um, channels, it went from AV through the HDMIs, through the SCART, through the, um, the, uh, the component in and the composite in, but it never went to DTV. And it's the digital television service. It's the Freeview board. Now, this Freeview board is also connected to a logic board above it. And it's one of those two that can go short and cause this problem. We're going to replace both of them. And then hopefully the TV will come on. It'll show us the DTV signal, because we didn't see that before. 
and then we can leave it on test. Now, with this being the age that it is, to get into it, I've got to remove screws all around here. Look at the back plate if you wanted to wall mount it. Oh, blimey. And then I'm going to have to take off a few bits here. The shielding will have to come off because there's another board behind there that I need to um, get into. So let's do that next. So the shielding has come off. It took a bit of tugging, then I realised there was still one screw left in the middle there. And you can see how the Freeview board is connected to this input board. And I think it's the input board, which is, as you can see, that connects to the rest of the main board. I'm not too sure if it is that one. So just for now, I'm going to change this one and see if that gets the TV to stay on. So we're just going to swap this board over for now. Just lift that up and that will come out. This is one of those old PMC IA slots they used to be called. They were found in computers, but they were a great way to... I don't know anyone that actually used them for anything. You could buy PMC CIA slots. I don't think I'm saying that right. It's been so long. Um, PMC IA. I think that's right. Anyway. Program module cards interface something. Somebody will let me know. Somebody will be Googling that right now. But you could buy cards that would get your extra digital channels extra free view channels that sometimes you'd have to subscribe to and you'd have to subscribe to them but instead of having to have a whole new digibox you could just plug your PMCI card PMCIA card in here and it would pick UK Gold the Living Channels um, probably Sky One maybe I don't think it picked up any of the sports channels it may have done I can't remember it's a it, it was a time ago that come with a wire? No. Right, I'm going to put this one over here so I don't get it confused. I'm not 100% that this is the faulty one. Usually, as you can see, they're sold in pairs. Um, but they, they aren't paired up for any particular reason, but they, they are sold in pairs and you usually replace in pairs. But I'm doing it singularly because I just can't remember which was the faulty board. Um, it would be great if it was just the Freeview board that was the faulty board. And it could well be, because it is a bit of a hassle having to... Uh, ...get this other input board out. Lots of screws and lots of maneuvering anyway putting this board back in i'm not putting the um the shielding back on just yet i want to see how this behaves with just this board now this is a risky thing to do i shouldn't really be doing this i should replace both boards why well what if it's a short on the freeview board that is also taking out the PMCIA board. What if, what if it is that? I'm putting this board in with the old Freeview board and I'm going to short this one out. I don't think that's going to happen. But I've done a couple of these in the past and I just can't remember. And it wasn't that long ago I did them. It was only a year or so ago. 
um, than I did them, but I can't remember which one of the two boards it was. Right, so all inputs are back in. That's the good board. Let me just manoeuvre a few things out of the way. And I'll turn the TV around and we'll give it a test and see what happens this time. So, I have a red light. I don't know if that's showing up. It is now. I'll turn the TV on. There's the TV coming on. What channel it's going to come on, I have the faintest idea. If it comes on a digital channel, on a Freeview channel, then we know we've hit the jackpot, but at the moment, no, it's AV4. If I, if I remember correctly, it took the TV five to ten minutes to go into the nine blink code, but it only took a couple of minutes for it to start losing its picture. So I'm going to let this run for a couple of minutes, and then what I'm going to do is, I said, I haven't got a Sony remote here because I'm just in my workshop at home. But what I intend to do in a couple of minutes' time, if it hasn't started doing anything erratic, is select the inputs and see if it brings up the the Freeview channels. If it go if it goes into DTV mode, then I'll know we've sorted it. But at the moment, all seems well. Now, at this point, I would normally play some music and go and make myself a cup of tea and focus in on Misty Girl, as you can see. But the mixing desk that I used to play the music through, I've now put a big duvet on for her to sleep on in the winter, so that's what she thinks. <laughs> She's saying, you're not getting to those faders, mate. I now own this part, and I'm staying here for the winter. Anyway, so far so good, isn't it? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, don't say that. Now, obviously, a lot of people are probably thinking, OK, you fixed it. Yeah, nice one. Thank you. But why don't you show us whereabouts on what, the, what is the fault on the board? Well, we've, I'd, we've had a good look through the boards, the faulty ones that we take out. We can't find any capacitor shorts, can't find any coils that are hanging off, can't find anything untoward. Um, so it could just be some of the surface mount caps that have started to age because it's even though Panasonic were great at the electro uh, Panasonic and Sony were great at the electrolytic caps age wise they weren't so brilliant with the um with the surface mount caps and I haven't got my ESR tester here so I'm not going to go through that process I just wanted to make this a quick video of if you have a t an old Sony LCD TV uh, the nine blinks and this particular error that you see where it's erratic and it switches the backlights off and then they come back on and it does that for about 10 minutes and then the TV gives up um, is is down to one of those two cards and it's now looking like it is that PMCIA card but it, it affects quite a few models some some of the older models in fact this is this this is kind of a newer model compared to the ones we've repaired in the past even though this is now a vintage 2007, but wow, what a great picture for 2007. Backlight's still working. Picture quality on that, the HD picture quality is fantastic. Now if, if you ever bought one of these around two, between 2007 and 2010, which, when this was the style. Ooh, 
don't panic it's just the um it's just the dvd disc this is now convincing me that uh, the dvd disc has just gone into another uh, menu mode so it's convincing me that that's the right board and we don't have to do anything else apart from put the tv back together again but let me just find switch the lights on here so i can see right the input is that one so one of these should give us the dtv mode now let's have a look because it wasn't doing that before it was going av1 through to six and then pc and then i think back to av1 again there we are you see that's what was missing even though it's not the free view board we've taken out it's a short on that pcmcia card um that shorts out the free view board because we weren't getting any particular free view channel sorry you can't tell but now it's look bbc one northern ireland i don't know why it's northern ireland maybe the memory is stored in the um pcm card because it should be bbc southwest but hey ho the fact that I now have my digital channels back and I can tune in, I know it's not this board. But as I say, they're sold as a pair. So the fault is going to be on that board there. Let's just switch the lights on and see if we can see anything oozing out of a cap. No. And we couldn't last time. It could be the NAND chip. Could be several things. But of course, it's just not worth, from an engineer's point of view, spending time even playing with that, because you're just going to be chasing down a rabbit hole for the the price of these boards um, and the time it takes. You know, these, these these are literally just a few pounds from eBay. As long as you know the model number of your TV. But it's it's something on this which also shorts out that and stops you from getting the free view channels, which upsets the TV and makes it switch on and off and on. After 10 minutes, it will then go into its big blink code. So I will now quite happily put the TV back together again. Put the stand back on and the customer can have it back. But a nine blink code is connected to the uh, PMC cardboard, which is also connected to the Freeview board. And as I said, they, they normally get um, sold as a pair. They, they normally come together on eBay or when, you, when you're buying them. And you might as well replace both, I suppose. It's a shame it's not just this board, because this board is just so easy to replace. You don't have to take the shielding off. But to get to this one, all the shielding has to come off and quite a few screws. But in the end, the TV is fine. So I'm going to put it back together and get it back to the customer. Nine blink code. PCMCIA, whatever it's called, board. On the Sony's.